Hello everybody! Today we're going to see quadratic functions and transformations. A quadratic function is a polynomial which biggest degree is the second power. The general form is y equals to ax squared plus bx plus c. To give an example, if we have the function y equals to 2x squared plus 3x plus 4, the value of a is equals to, the value of b is equals 3, and the value of c is equal 4. Another way to represent the quadratic functions is in the vertex form. y equals to a parenthesis x minus h to the second power plus k. We're going to see this later. Now, graphically, how can we understand a quadratic function? Well, the graph of a quadratic function is a parabola. It's this one. And this graph is the graph of y equals to x squared, where the value of a for this case is going to be equals to 1. Okay? Remember, next to the variable, if we don't have a number, it means we have a number 1. Another way to write y let me write lowercase y. Another way to write y is f of x. It needs to be a lowercase f. f of x equals to x squared. This and this are the same. And the name of this is the parent function. Why? Because we are going to do some transformations related to the parent function. We are going to compare these functions to other graphs. The vertical transformation we can have is vertical compression, vertical stretch, or vertical reflection. An example of vertical compression is when we have f of x equals to ax squared. Remember, a could be any number. Let's start with a equals to 1, a equals to 2, 3, and 4. Remember, a equals to 1 it's a equals to x squared, which is our parent function. Is this green? y equals to x squared. What happens if we increase the number? Just by 1. 2, 3, 4. Could be more numbers, remember. Then what is happening with my graph? Our transformation could be compression or stretch. What is happening here? My graph, when the number is getting bigger, my graph is compressing in the vertical axis. Let's see an example of vertical stretch. We continue y equals to ax squared. But now, instead of increasing the value of the number, we are decreasing the value of the number. My parent function is y equals to x squared. What happened? If I write values less than 1, like 0 0.7, or 0 0.4, the blue one, or 0 0.2, if you see, when the value of a decrease is less than 1, the parabola will have a vertical stretch. But be careful, it's going to be less of 1, but it's not going to be less than zero, okay? Then I can say a is greater than zero, but is less than one. Let's do the next problem. Graph y equals to 2x squared. y equals to 2x squared is going to be a transformation of y equals 2x squared, and it's going to be, because it's bigger than one, is going to be a compression. We already know the vertex. The vertex is this point, is the minimum point in this case, where my graph could get. My point is 0, 0. I need to know at least two more points. I already know my vertex. My vertex, the value of x is 0, and the value of y needs to be 0. That means the point that I'm going to graph my vertex is 0, 0. Okay. Then, I need to choose 
one value to the left of 0 and one value to the right of 0. Which number could be? Well, to the left of 0 is minus 1, minus 2, etc. I could take more, but with 1 is enough. Let's take what happened when the value of x is minus 1. What is going to be the value of f of x or the value of y? We are going to plug in the value of x equals to negative 1 instead of the value of x. Then we have 2 times minus 1 to the second power. Remember, minus 1 to the second power is positive 1 times 2 is equals 2. The point we have is minus 1 for x and 2 for y. Another important property of the quadratic functions is in the vertex we have our axis of symmetry. This axis of symmetry has the same property of a mirror. That means what happened in the left is going to happen in the right. If we have minus 1 e positive 2 for y, that means if we move one unit to the right, we are going to have the same value in y. Then when the value of x is equals to 1, the value of y is equals to 2. You can see here in the graph. Now as you can see, the final result when I graph my points, when the value of x is negative 1, the value of y is positive 2. It's right here. And when the value of y is positive 1, the value of x is positive 2. And the vertex is 0, 0. Then we just need to join the points. Another important thing to remember is the parabola always we're going to draw an arrow in the end. That means it continue forever. And the last part of this topic is reflection. As you can see, the parent function y equals to x squared, if we have y equals to negative x squared, it means it's going to be the same graph, but it's going to reflect. It's going to be upside down. They're going to be exactly the same points. You see, minus 2 and positive 4 is this one. Positive 2, 2. Now, because we are reflecting, we are just putting down this point. If we are moving four units up, instead of that, we're going to move four units down. And the same is going to happen with two. Instead to go up, we're going to go down four units. We're going to continue in the next video. See you.